What exactly are IOD stamps? We thought you'd never ask. IOD stamps are stamps in the sense that you usually know them. However, ours are designed specifically with fashion and decor and jewelry in mind. So those are the things that are going to be reflected in the scale and the designs of our stamps. They're even food safe, so you can use them in your sugar arts as well. I'm gonna take my stamps and go stamping now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's first condition them. <laughs> Conditioning is easy and you only need to do it one time, the first time you open your new stamps. The reason for this is it's going to help you stabilize the medium on the surface and give you a cleaner impression. So, you're going to open them up and you're going to use a fine sanding block and lightly sand in two directions. This is creating kind of a micro texture and as a great example I like to use, when I have used our stamps for glazing, for applying stamped glaze onto pottery, um, that medium really has a lot of water and it wants to bead on the surface. By giving it that network of kind of a, a micro crosshatch, mm -hmm. it stabilizes that medium, gives it something to hold onto, and gives a way cleaner impression. Super easy. And like we said, you only do it the one time. So I'm just going two directions. There we went that direction, then we will go back and do this direction. Easy peasy, stamps are conditioned. Our stamps are such a high quality, they don't come with any kind of release, um, like a silicone or anything like that, that can interfere, so that's not an issue. Just getting that micro texture on there. Next, we are going to dive into how to mount your stamps. Exactly, that's the first step in actually putting them to use. There's a couple of different ways. My favorite way is to take this sheet and actually cut it apart um, so that each of these stays on a portion of this backing and then you use them kind of a la carte um, as individual pieces. It's a little more challenging to store them that way, but that's one of my favorite ways to do that. That's not going to be as relevant when you are using, for example, the alphabet stamps, in which case you're taking those off of this backing and you're arranging them in a way that you want to be able to mount them on one of our thin mount sheets. So the different ways you're going to mount are going to depend on the product and the project. We're gonna use this project to show you both types of mounting. I'm gonna get the word art arranged and pick it up with my thin mount. While you're doing that, I'll start cutting this so that we can also demonstrate the way I was talking about. Perfect. Now, this has already been prepped and this is our block type design and we have over 25 designs and counting lots of different alphas also remember you have to have the back of your stamp clean and dry and whatever surface like your thin mount clean and dry as well otherwise it's not going to stick well so if you ever notice your stamps kind of being floppy or not sticking well to the surface clean them dry them try again okay so i'm going to just face the design down right about there and i want to stamp this first the reason is we'll show you later it it goes into the masking okay So I just pick it up just like that with the thin mount. I turn it over. Can you hand me the ink pad? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to show you how to ink a pad. Always shake your medium, and this not only for our mediums, but all mediums, because you've also always got carriers and pigments that you need to get all together. Mm -hmm. 
Our ink pads and ink come separately. These are IOD decor inks and they come in the bottle. I am going to go ahead and fill the stamp. Our inks are specially formulated for decor projects. So I simply run the ink over the pad like so, being nice and juicy, and going right up to the edge. And then I stop squeezing and I just use the tip to work it in. Store your ink pads upside down so the ink stays on the surface. And then when you go to do a project, if it's been a while since you've inked your pad up, give it a refresher. Okay, so I've got it ready and here I go. You want to make sure you're covering the surface of the design without being so juicy that it gets sloppy, okay? Turn it over. Now, when you're applying your stamp, you wanna hover a little bit. Make sure you're in the right spot. The grids really help on the thin mounts. Mm -hmm. And then as you come down, don't shift. Commit. Hold it still, use one hand to hold it steady, the other hand to gently run over the surface so that you're making contact. Now, if this were fabric, I might go a little bit juicier and maybe hesitate a little bit longer, linger a little bit longer to make sure you really get good contact with that medium and the fabric. And then you lift gently up and voila, you've got your design. Isn't that pretty? So I always get pretty. so excited after you see the design on there. Okay. So, so the next thing we were going to talk about mm -hmm. is masking. Mm -hmm. But even before we go there, let's talk a moment about this dry time because ah. that's super relevant to masking. Yes, it masking is. Masking is going to be taking a piece and protecting that in order to be able to layer your stamping. But of course you need this to be somewhat dry, otherwise you're gonna smear it. So this is not sealed. And so therefore this will be dry in a good set and not smearing in probably 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. You could put it under a fan or hit it with a little bit of warm air to speed that up. Now, if on the other hand, this were sealed or if it were a non-porous surface, a that's going to take longer to dry. It's mm -hmm. gonna sit on that surface a little bit longer and it's not going to soak in. So you just wanna be mindful of that when you go into the steps of masking that you're not putting your mask over something that's mm -hmm. wet. So mm -hmm. let's just give that a moment to dry. Sounds good. And then get started. I always make sure to wipe my stamp clean after I'm done using it immediately with some wipies. I just have them handy and then I give it a quick wipe like that. Now, if I know I'm not going to use the stamp again, I will actually toss it into a bowl of warm soapy water and then when I'm completely done with my project, I will take that over to the sink, wash them all, again, warm, soapy, water. Warm, warm, not hot. Not hot, no high heat with your stamps. It should be comfortable to the touch. And then when they're all done, you simply put them back on the sheet. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside. Now I'm going to find my mask. And I simply line up the mask to the design. There we go. I find the one that I want. I'm going to pull it out. My word is dry. There we go. and they come out really easily. You can just pop them all out and keep them in an envelope for later. 
Now, I want the and word to be on top. You kind of have to think in reverse when you're masking. So because I want that to be on top, I'm going to cover that. So the masks are just barely outside of the design and what that does is it creates this really crisp border around the stamps. The reason for the stamps, I'm sorry, the masks, the reason for the masks are to create clarity mm -hmm. between your designs so they don't get muddy as the line work builds yeah. up. Gives you a really neat graphic look. Yes. So as you lay out your words here, we can remove mm -hmm. this for the moment so that you can uh, lay your words and how you want them to overlap that. Sorry. <laughs> They can I don't know a why. lot of abuse. Totally. I don't know why I even got... Panic? I got panicky? Protective? Maybe. You arrangey. Okay. I love the fact that we have several more fonts because honestly, I can emulate any beautiful word art that I see. Mm. I haven't run across one that I can't be inspired by. I hate using the word copy, but <laughs> copy with my own words. Okay. How do you think? Like that? I love it. So we just have that going, overlapping that for a, a, just just a, a smidge. Mm -hmm. And this I have not perfectly straight. It's mm -hmm. a little bit. Let's good. come into the word a little bit more. All right. Just so that they can really see how the masking works. Sounds good. Okay. And we'll definitely be able to pick up all of the letters with the Yes. Amount. Okay. And over the top skis, here mm -hmm. we go. Nice. Go ahead and press on so that you get good adhesion to your thin mount there. Because there's a lot of letters. When you have a lot of letters, you want to be just a little bit more cognizant of even pressure. So then you pull up. Nice. Masky mask. Perfect. And move this to the side. All right. And here we go. Am I centered good? I'm hovering. Looks good to Looks me. Looks good, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm going to gently lay down. And don't shift. Don't shift. It takes a little bit of measure, you know, control like mm -hmm. so you're you're not getting in there all sloppy because you, especially when you're using the mask because you don't want to shift the mask and then lose that uh, coverage and right. have your plan go off yeah take your time take a deep breath and practice 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 when you're using the stamps get out some plywood get out test it on different surfaces mm -hmm. the more you use stamps the more you fall in love with it's them it's all about the reps yeah just practicing getting that feel um, not shifting is a big one practicing mm -hmm. when you commit don't get any sideways because then you get kind of that double vision blur once in a while it happens and sometimes it's like no big deal but sometimes mm -hmm. you're like ah. Oh, I want to redo yeah. that. Like yesterday in a live, I actually, uh, my hand slipped a little bit and it ended up looking cool. It did. Okay. Lift straight up. Nice. Oh, perfect. Yep. And you can see the mask actually came right up with the sheet. Yeah. So. I know. I thought, wait, Fabulous. Why Excellent. I, I love, love it. it. So now let's let this dry mm -hmm. and then we're going to come in with some seashells. Perfect. All right. So we've got it all dry and we are going to start masking the letters so we can build up the shells.
sweet. sweet now sweet. we don't need to cover the and because the shells aren't going to come in contact with that part of the design. Right, right, right. So this is how I was talking about. You can cut them right out mm -hmm. and use the backing they come on as the mounting surface. What you want to make sure and do is cut off sharp corners. Ooh, yeah. Ask me how I know. Mm -hmm. Very much. Ouch. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and put a few of the designs down and I'm going to space them so the first step isn't going to be masking. The first step is going to be putting the stamps that I want in the foreground down. Mm -hmm. The more you mask, the more you'll kind of get used to thinking about it backwards. <laughs> the foreground goes down first. Yes. And I'm going to get right up in here with this mm -hmm. one. And when I lift it, it's going to kind of pull up that mask, but I'm going to be aware of that and just place it right back down. And have your sister hold it down. Yeah. <laughs> and there'll be ink on it, remember. And the ink doesn't dry quickly on the masks because, like we said, it's a non-porous surface. There we go. Nice. And now I'm going to do this one, like right here. How's that? Mm -hmm. I'm taking my time so that I don't shift my masks around too much. And I want to go ahead and get good contact. In fact, here's a great example. You're going to have that um, little margin around it, but you do want to make sure that you make good contact around where your mask is so that the margin isn't bigger than you want it to be. That's a little go. tighter, you can see. There you go. Now, let's over here in this side take a nice big picture here. And we're really getting into the words so that you can really see the masking concept in action. Now we've got all of the shells that we want in the foreground. We're gonna go ahead and let it dry and come back with the background shells. All right, we're ready to get going again. So we're going to use the masks to cover the foreground shells and get started with the background ones. That's right. And sometimes you're going to be having your masks are going to kind of layer up on each other a little mm -hmm. bit. So just be aware of that so that you avoid mm -hmm. shifting your masks. And Put your eyes on them when you're about to do an impression because they move around a little bit. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, we good? Think yeah. we've got them all masked? Yeah. Okay. So, what do you think about like doing one there? I like this mm -hmm. little guy right here. We I like that. All right, let's do that. 
gonna put this one. Place it again. We've got masks here, and they tend to be a little slidey. So you set straight down without shift. Masking is a, a tool in your repertoire that is so powerful and it takes a little practice, but you'll be able to do so much more. Okay, I'm going to use some of the coral kind of connecting Ooh. as connecting bits. I like it. We designed the coral in this connect collection so that you could actually build your coral up to be at any design that you want to fit your project. Mm -hmm. True. Nice. Do we want to put something over here, kind of coming behind the... Yeah, let's do that, and then I do. think we call it good. Coral coming up through, like a, a piece of coral right there. How about another think? small starfish? Okay, yeah, I like coming it. down this Ooh, way. Yeah, 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 I like that. When you're stamping, you'll notice we lay our stamps on the flat surface face up mm -hmm. and bring the pad to the stamp because that way you're getting a flat surface on a flat surface. If you try to do it the other way, you've got angles you're putting in there and you're not going to get that nice even uh, application. And you just pat on the surface, pat gently over and over. Pat, pat, pat. You don't need to press, you actually just really want to get that surface design. How about that? Yeah. Coming in off the edge like that. I like that. Perfect. It's really worth the time to take to get that delicate, layered, detailed look that you're mm -hmm. after. Straight up. All right, so this is kind of the fun part. Yes. Removing Gently removing your masks. masks. Doing it lifting straight up because you've got one ink at on a your time. mask. One at a time. I just said one at a time. <laughs> these all three came up together, but that's okay. Being, remember, some of these have ink on them that mm -hmm. you don't want to get on your piece. So right. being uh, careful. In fact, you can take one of the masks and kind of lift your edge up that way if you need to. Good it's idea. kind of a little bit of a Trixies. Trixies. One last little. Oh, that is beautiful. I love that. Mm, that is the power of masking. If you had done this without masking, you'd have a lot going on and it would really muddy up your design to have those designs all overlapping and showing through. Mm -hmm. With masking, you get the look of something that is just a great composition that's complementing one another rather right. than competing. Exactly. Now we're going to talk a little bit about using your stamps for texture and we're going to show you two techniques that demonstrate that. The first technique, Sal, why don't you share with them our stamped impress texture where you're mm -hmm. using paint to create a special texture. Absolutely. All right, so I just have, hold up. This is one of our stamps that you do not do anything for mounting. Mm. So, yes, this, this comes as one full sheet and you never take it off. That's the same with our Krakulur, mm -hmm. our Distress Stamp. Mm -hmm. And so various times we have designs that you never take off the backing sheet. And usually they are designs that are meant for kind of an overall texture. Exactly. Okay, so I'm just taking some paint here. Now this is a mineral based or chalk type paint, which means it's a little thicker. That's important. And I'm just going to squirt a little bit on here. That's plenty. 
and I am going to use this rubber spatula to move it around and the reason for that is I don't want a lot of brush strokes for this technique. So I'm just kind of floating it. It has this beautiful kind of plastered finish and it moves the paint around. Silky. Mm-hmm. I love it. Now when doing this type of technique, moving paint around with the rubber spatula, you want to make sure that you don't have dry chunks in your paint because it'll make drag spots. I have a little bit of that, but not too much to worry about, so I'm going to keep moving along. Once I've got my smooth surface, I am going to go ahead and take the kind Question. of... Question. Yes. Is thickness important when you're laying down for oh, texture yes. for using your stamps mm -hmm. and texture do you want that coat to be kind of on the thick side you do and the the impression that the stamp leaves is going to be different depending on how thick the paint is there you're going to have beautiful kind of organic movement in the stamp design because of that but you also want to be aware and make sure you have some nice thick spots so that you get a really sharp impression in those spots. Now you'll also notice again that when you experiment with different dry times you will get to see how you like that and play with it until you get it exactly the way you want it. Exactly. It's more of an art than an exact science. And doing the reps and learning and getting a feel for it mm -hmm. is what you're going to want to do. That's right. So I'm going to let this set up for just a minute. All right. I have let it set up again just a little bit, just so it has enough structure to hold that impression. I'm going to take my stamp and I'm going to go over the top like so. Oh, you just moved it. No, it's good. It's good? Okay. There you go. <laughs> So now with this, typically when you're doing ink and going onto an ink impression, you don't want to put excessive pressure. You want even firm pressure. Mm -hmm. With this, you want a little more pressure because you're using that pressure to mm -hmm. actually create, um, to get into that surface you've created for yeah. your design. Now. Mmm, beautiful. Okay, so you can see here the difference in the impression between the spaces that were a little thinner and set up a little faster than the places that were a little thicker and took a little longer to set up. Both are fabulous. And when you use this technique, this is typically going to be one of the steps. And you might do things like either doing a color wash to pop that texture or using the same squeegee technique with paint that we showed you, squeegeeing mm -hmm. a contrasting color over it. There's great examples we have here for you where you can see how this shines. The second way to really get impact with texture with your IOD stamps is using air dry clay. Let's go ahead, take a piece, and demonstrate for you what you can do. Now our air dry clay is actually artist quality clay. And the reason you can do this technique with our clay is because it holds a finer impression. Exactly. Let's take this. This is from our crockery stamp set. We're going to lay it down. Again, no shifting. And then we're going to use a fair amount of pressure to really let it get it pressed into the clay. Okay. Now we're going to pull it back. And mm -hmm. you have this awesome texture. But there's one more step that's a little trick that I like to use that kind of smooths down your pillowing. Mm -hmm. So you can see here, and this, is, this looks awesome just like it is. And you could let it dry and knock those down. But one of the things I like to do is to kind of plateau those qu kind of quilted areas. So I'm going to lay down my thin mount. I'm going to just gently massage that 
and it changes the profile of that surface. Mm. So you can see you have a cleaner look without that kind of pillowy quilted look. Mm. So this is a fabulous piece right here, just like this. Put a color wash on it, mm -hmm. create a shadow box where mm -hmm. it looks like just a salvage relic. All right, you guys, you now have everything you need to know to get started. Make sure to use the store locator to find a stockist near you or online and go to Facebook and join mm -hmm. the Creative Tribe, yes. IOD Creative Tribe. The link is below. Now, go make something beautiful. <laughs>